Would you believe the South is home to the largest percentage of LGBTQ people in the country? Ignoring the contributions of LGBTQ Southerners erases invaluable history in the region. And worse, it makes it harder for progress to take root. For instance, though Mississippi has one of the highest numbers of same-sex couples raising children under 18 years old, it has few to no legal protections for LGBTQ people. So what's the deal? Is the South doomed to a queerless, unmagical existence forever? The answer is an unequivocal no. And there's a rich history to prove it. Just six months after the Stonewall riots, Southerners were organizing, on pace with others around the country. When a protest against police harassment happened in Atlanta, following the showing of Andy Warhol's Lonesome Cowboys, the community founded the Georgia Gay Liberation Front, which organized the first Pride March in the state in 1971. The community was showing up for itself, and it's no surprise that trans women and drag queens were at the forefront. Bronzy DeMarco from Alabama learned drag in the 70s by sneaking into a gay bar to watch her uncle perform. She's been performing across the South for over 50 years. The female impersonator's Miss Florida pageant began in 1972 and was the only major female impersonation pageant that permitted trans women to compete. In 1973, Miss Gay America began in Nashville, Tennessee. Fast forward 28 years, and Atlanta's Tandy Iman Dupree won the Miss Gay Black America pageant in 2001. There was no denying the movement's momentum in the South which is why there was considerable pushback. For instance, in 1977, Florida's Miami-Dade County adopted an ordinance banning employment and housing discrimination based on sexual orientation. It was a good decision that garnered national support and opposition. But despite the uphill battle, the Southern queer movement never lost its steam. In 2016, Ambrosia Starling protested outside the Alabama State Court of the Judiciary against the conservative political agenda of Roy Moore. The Carolina Gay Association formed in 1974 on the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill campus. In 1976, the CGA sponsored the inaugural Southeastern Gay Conference and over 300 people attended. Now, more people than ever are engaged in North Carolina's equality fight, as trans people are told where they can and cannot use the bathroom. Rather than being disconnected from national movements, LGBTQ Southerners have been present at and participated in protests, legal battles, and social events throughout the country. There was a plethora of LGBTQ publications in the 1970s South. At the time, print magazines and newsletters were the primary way in which people found LGBTQ information and events in their area. But the history is even older than many people realize. In the early 1910s, Anthony Ariema protested against an Atlanta ban on men wearing women's clothing by walking around in women's wear near Peachtree Street. He became famous as the female impersonator Frances Renault. Café Lafitte in Exile is the oldest continuously operating gay bar in the U.S. The bar opened on Bourbon Street at the end of Prohibition, and famous LGBTQ Southerners were early regulars. In 1961, Maxine Doyle Perkins, a trans woman, was arrested outside of Charlotte for having sex with a man. During her trial, she pleaded not guilty and refused to answer to her dead name. She was sentenced to 30 years in prison, but was released in 1964, and her very public case led to the reduction in sentencing for sodomy charges in North Carolina. The truth is, LGBTQ people have always been in the South, and Southern queer history and culture is still unfolding. There remains a lot to discover, and the movement is long from over. It's now up to us to locate and preserve these rich stories so that they live on for future generations, making the world and the South 
feel a little more like home for everyone.